So that is the method if we use the router's physical interface or we use the router's sub-interface to implement the intermediate communication. Next, we will introduce another method, which is that we don't need a real device router. We can only use a layer 3 switch, and within the layer 3 switch, we use the VLAN interface. We can also implement the inter-VLAN communication by using this VLAN interface. So the configuration will be like this. So you can see that here, we still have several PCs belong to different VLANs. However, we only have one physical device, which is the layer 3 switch. In layer 3 switch, actually they composed of two different modules. One is the layer 2 module, which is the switching module. You can think of this module as a layer 2 switch. And we have another module, which is the routing module, or which is the layer 3 module. You can think of that as the router. But actually, we put the layer 3 router and layer 2 switch together into one device. OK, so this is the physical configuration of this VLAN interface. And we need to connect the VLAN 10 in layer 2 switch with a VLAN interface. So first, in this layer 3 router, in this layer 3 module of the layer 3 switch, actually we need to set up two VLAN interface. One is VLAN interface 10, another is VLAN interface 20. And we also need to match this VLAN interface with the VLAN 10 and this interface with the VLAN 20. And these two interfaces actually they have a direct internal communication within this module. We can uh, forward the packet using this routing module. For example, if there is a packet coming in, then this should be forwarded to this virtual interface. And then because this virtual interface have a direct internal communication with this interface, so if they find that the next hub should be the outgoing interface should be this one, then they can forward the packet to this interface by this internal communication. And then this one find that, okay, this packet is destined to a PC in this VLAN 20. So they will send the packet through the VLAN 20 and finally to the PC2. So the packet transmission is achieved. Okay, so to enable such communication, actually we need to correct, configure the different modules in this layer 3 switch. So first, we need to configure the PC to give the default gateway to be this IP. Okay, and also we need to configure the default gateway of PC2. So this two IP actually is the IP address of VLAN interface 10 and VLAN interface 20. Okay, and then the key configuration actually is in the switch. So let's look at how to configure this uh, VLAN interface in this switch. So first we need to set to configure two VLANs here. Okay. And then we need to go into the interface one. So this interface to configure this interface. And this interface should work at the access type, right? Work at the access type. And the default uh, VLAN ID should be 10 because they are connected with this VLAN 10. So this command, that's all for the interface one's configuration. And then for the interface two's configuration, so similarly, they should be in access type and the default VLAN ID is 20 to connect with the VLAN 20. Then let's configure the layer 3 module. So for layer 3 module, first we need to set up two VLAN interface. So here we use this command to set up to create a VLAN interface. So we first create a VLAN interface 10, and then we allocate the IP address to the VLAN interface 10. So the IP address is as this one. And then similarly, we create a VLAN interface 20 and allocate the IP address. Okay, so that's all. 
how does this interface forward packet to this interface? Actually, we don't need to configure. They're already connected with each other within this device. Okay, so after successfully configured the VLAN interface, actually we can analyze the packet forwarding process. So first, the PC send a packet out. The packet is destined to PC2. And here, the source MAC actually is the MAC1. And destination MAC should be the default gateway of this PC1's MAC address. So the destination should be MAC2. And the source IP is his own IP. And the destination IP should be the PC2's IP. Okay, so that's the packet transmitted from the PC1. And there is no tag in this packet. Then next, the VLAN 10 access interface will receive this packet and they will add the 10 as the tag into the packet. So in this packet, actually, they have already added the tag in it and all the other things doesn't change. And then they arrive the VLAN interface 10. Next, if when this VLAN 10 uh, receive this packet, actually, they will check the destination MAC address. They find that the destination MAC address is itself. So they will receive this packet. And then they will check the destination IP address. And they find that for that destination IP address, they should forward this packet to the interface 20. So they will rewrite the source MAC and destination MAC of the packet. So the source MAC should be rewrite as itself, the MAC2. And the destination MAC address should be written as the still the MAC2. And then send to the VLAN interface 20. And similarly, VLAN interface 20 will receive this packet and then to check whether it is for itself. Yes, it is for it's the MAC address, destination MAC address is for itself. So they should check it. And then uh, they check the IP address to forward out. Here, you need to be very careful that, okay, so when they forward the package, the tag has been deleted, okay? And then this interface will forward out. And where does it forward out? to uh, which outgoing interface they should forward because this IP address actually is belong the direct routing table of this VLAN interface to 20 because this is directly communicated to this router and this router is the default gateway of this IP address. So by looking at the direct routing entry, the VLAN interface 20 can know that they should forward the package through this interface. And then it goes to the switch. And then the switch, by checking the MAC address table, they can know for the MAC address of PC2, they should forward through this interface. So that's all for the VLAN interface forwarding process. So you can see that the VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 in the switching module, actually they forward by checking with the MAC address. But the VLAN interface 10 and 20 in the routing module, they check the outgoing interface by looking at the IP address. Okay, so that's the key difference between the layer 2 switch and layer 3 switch.